Hello everyone and welcome to the video. In this video, we will be discussing about the basic MRI physics. So let's move on to the video. First, we shall learn about the hydrogen proton. So in the video that I did regarding the principle of MRI, I explained that the hydrogen proton spins on its axis and when it is applied to an external magnetic field, it presses around the axis of the magnetic field. Now, the hydrogen proton or the proton in the hydrogen nucleus spins on its axis. That means the hydrogen proton is a charged particle. It is a positively charged particle. So, it spins on its proton and creates a nuclear magnetic dipole called a magnetic moment. And this is the basis of MRA. That means the charge, the hydrogen proton spins on its axis and thereby develops a magnetic field around it. And this hydrogen nucleus behaves or this hydrogen proton behaves as a small magnet. Now, based on this property of hydrogen proton, we perform the MRI imaging. Now, every charged particle has a magnetic field associated with it. That means every charged particle that moves has a magnetic field associated with it. So here we know that the hydrogen proton spins on its axis. Hydrogen proton is a positively charged particle and it spins on its axis and thereby creates a magnetic field and hence the hydrogen proton behaves as a small magnet. Now we know that hydrogen has got three isotopes, one is protium, other one is deuterium, the third one is tritium. Now protium we know that it has a single electron and a single proton that means its atomic number is one and its mass number is also one. In case of deuterium we find that it has got one electron, one proton and one neutron. So here the atomic number is 1 and the mass number is 2. That means one proton and one neutron contrib contributes to mass number 2. Now in tritium what happens? There are two protons, sorry, two neutrons, one proton and one electron. So in tritium uh, or the tritium isotope of hydrogen, it has got mass number as 3 and atomic number as 1 again. For MRI imaging, we use protium, that means the isotope of hydrogen called protium is used uh, as an MR active nucleus. So that means for clinical MRI, we are using protium. Now, we know that when a charged particle moves, there is an electric field as well as a magnetic field associated with it. So there is that means this electric and magnetic field is related by the phenomenon known as electromagnetism. The law of electromagnetism states that a magnetic field is created when a charged particle moves. So this is what electromagnetism says. That means when a charged particle moves, an, a magnetic field is created. So that is a law of electromagnetism. Now here you can see uh, in the first image, you can see two images. In the first image, you can see the hydrogen proton. So here the green circle indicates the hydrogen proton. The red axis indicates the magnetic field of the hydrogen proton. Now this hydrogen proton, as I said, it is a positively charged particle and it spins on its axis and therefore a magnetic field is generated. Thus the hydrogen proton behaves as a small magnet. Now, when this hydrogen proton is subjected to an external magnetic field, so in the second picture you can see the hydrogen proton presses along the axis of the magnetic field. Okay, so here you can see applied the axis of applied magnetic field. You can also see the hydrogen proton. Now, what does the hydrogen proton do? It spins on its axis and at the same time, it presses or it rotates around the applied magnetic field. Now, this phenomenon is known as precision. So, I have already explained in the principle of MRI regarding precision. 
So precision means when a hydrogen proton is subjected to an external magnetic field, it, spin, it uh, spins on its axis and at the same time it also rotates around the applied magnetic field and this uh, process is known as precision. Now, in human body, the hydrogen protons are randomly oriented. So here in the image, you can see uh, the random orientation of hydrogen proton. Okay, so generally in human body, all the hydrogen protons, they are randomly oriented. That means uh, they move in different direction. Uh, uh, that means there is not a, um, they do not have a uniform direction. They are randomly oriented. Now, when you place the human body inside an MRI scanner, what happens? Most of the hydrogen proton gets aligned parallel to the applied magnetic field or to the magnetic field of the MRI machine. Few of the hydrogen proton aligns anti-parallel. Okay, so most of the protons will align parallel. Few of them will align anti-parallel to the magnetic field of the MRI machine. Now, the few anti-parallel components will get cancelled to their corresponding parallel components and then the remaining parallel hydrogen protons will contribute to the net magnetization. So, here you can see in the image the arrow represented by the red color or the vector shown in the red color is the net magnetization caused due to the parallel hydrogen protons inside the human body. So together they contribute to net magnetization. So I'll explain once more. The hydrogen proton is a positively charged particle and it spins on its axis. Now we know that a charged particle that moves has a magnetic field associated with it. So we know that hydrogen proton is a positively charged particle and it spins about its axis and therefore it a magnetic field is created around it. So the hydrogen proton acts as a small magnet. Now when this hydrogen proton is subjected to an external magnetic field, what happens? The hydrogen proton will persist or it will rotate uh, around the axis of the magnetic field and this phenomenon is known as precision. Now when you consider human body we know that 70% of human body is composed of water molecules. So inside the water molecule we know that there is abundance of hydrogen protons. Now this hydrogen protons are randomly oriented that means they do not have a uniform direction. They are randomly oriented uh, and hence, they do not contribute to any magnetization. Now, when this hydrogen protons or when the human body is subjected to an MRI scanner, what happens? Most of the hydrogen protons gets parallelly aligned to the magnetic field of the MRI machine and few of them gets aligned anti-parallel to the magnetic field of the MRI machine. Now, this few anti-parallel components gets cancelled out to their corresponding parallel components and the net magnetization is developed from the remaining parallel components of the hydrogen proton. Now what is equilibrium? Equilibrium means we know that when human body is subjected to MRI magnet what happens the hydrogen protons gets parallelly aligned to the uh, magnetic field of the MRI magnet. That means they will align across the z-axis. So the MRI magnetic field is aligned across the z-axis. Now here the hydrogen protons also will align parallel to z-axis. That means the net magnetization is developed around uh, the z-axis. So equilibrium condition means the net magnetization is present only in the z axis so it doesn't have any y component or x component okay so here the net magnetization is along z axis there is no y component and there is no x component this condition is known as equilibrium condition in equilibrium condition we do not get any signals for uh, generating images in mri 
Now, in order to generate signals so as to convert them into images, what we have to do? We have to apply additional RF pulses or radio frequency pulses with the help of RF coils or radio frequency coils so that the equilibrium condition may be disturbed and then we can generate signals from the hydrogen protons in order to convert them into image. So if you disturb the equilibrium condition here in the image you can see in the first image you can see that the net magnetization is along z axis there is no x component and there is no y component that means it is an equilibrium condition. Now if you are going to supply a 90 degree RF pulse if you are going to apply 90 degree RF pulse what happens the magnetization that was along z axis it moves towards the y axis or the x y plane. Now when the magnetization uh, moves towards the y axis or the x y plane we call it as x y magnetization or transverse magnetization. When the uh, magnetization is along z axis we can call it as z magnetization or longitudinal magnetization. So the transverse magnetization or the magnetization along y axis or x y plane is known as x y magnetization. Now, um, we, have, we have already given a 90 degree RF pulse. Now, if you are going to withdraw the 90 degree RF pulse, what happens? It will return to equilibrium. Now, here in this image, you can see that we have given a 90 degree RF pulse and it came to Y axis. Now, if you are going to withdraw the 90 degree RF pulse, what happens? The magnetization will slowly return back to z axis and this phenomenon is known as return to equilibrium okay that means after we withdraw the rf pulse what happens the component along x y plane or the component along y axis returns back to z axis and this phenomenon is known as return to equilibrium and it happens when the rf pulse is withdrawn now the next one is free induction decay. So free induction decay is the first MRI signal. Okay, the first MRI signal is known as free induction decay. Now how it produces? Now here in the first image you can see when we apply a 90 degree RF pulse what happens? The magnetization moves to Y axis. Okay, so the magnetization moves to Y axis. Now if we withdraw the RF pulse what happens? The magnetization along y-axis decreases. Now, when we withdraw the RF pulse or uh, when uh, after we apply the RF pulse, when the magnetization moves to y-axis, the first signal generated is known as free induction decay. Now, why we call it as free induction decay is because in the second image, you can see that the signals are decreasing with time. That means initially we get signals at a maximum peak and then the signals are slowly decreasing and that is why we call it as free induction decay. In the first image, you can see how the free induction decay is produced. That means when we apply the RF pulse, the magnetization from Z axis shifts to Y axis and a signal is generated and that is known as free induction decay. Okay, so this free induction decay, it is a first MRI signal. Although it is a first MRI signal, it is not used for imaging or the free induction decay does not contribute to image formation. Now, what is T1 relaxation? Okay, so T1 relaxation means when you are applying a 90 degree RF pulse, what happens? The magnetization along Z axis shifts to Y axis. Now, if we withdraw the RF pulse, what happens? The magnetization along Y axis will decrease and the magnetization along Z axis will increase. So T1 relaxation means on withdrawal of the RF pulse, the magnetization along Z axis increases. So this process of increase in the magnetization along Z axis is known as T1 relaxation. Or in other words, we can say that on withdrawal of the RF pulse, the increase in the longitudinal magnetization is known as T1 relaxation. Now, 
uh, here in the picture you can see the T1 recovery graph. Now uh, here the graph is an exponential graph. Now why we are, uh, now why an exponential graph is generated? So I said that T1 relaxation is the increase in longitudinal magnetization. As it is the increase in longitudinal magnetization, we get an exponential graph for T1 relaxation. And we, we call it call this graph as T1 recovery graph. Now, what is T1 relaxation time? T1 relaxation time means the time taken uh, for the increase in longitudinal magnetization to 63% is known as T1 relaxation. Or, in other words, we can say that the time taken for z-axis to achieve its 63% is known as T1 relaxation time. And since T1 relaxation is, uh, is the increase in longitudinal magnetization, we get an exponential graph. And this graph is known as T1 recovery graph. Next is T2 relaxation. For T1 relaxation, we already learned that the increase in longitudinal magnetization on withdrawal of the RF pulse is the T1 relaxation. So T2 relaxation means the decrease in transverse magnetization or the decrease in magnetization along y-axis on withdrawal of the RF pulse is known as T2 relaxation. Now, since T2 relaxation is decrease in transverse magnetization, here we get a depressing graph. So this graph is known as T2 DK curve. Now T2 relaxation time means the time taken for decrease in um, transverse magnetization and to reach its 37 percentage is known as T2 relaxation time. That means the time taken for the decrease in the uh, transverse magnetization from 100 percentage to 37 percentage is known as T2 relaxation time. Now this T1 relaxation and T2 relaxation so we use it for producing images. Now different tissues have different T1 relaxation time, different T2 relaxation time and based on which we get different signals and in this way we will be able to distinguish between the tissues in MRI. So that was all about the basic physics. Uh, so here what we have to learn is that we are using hydrogen protons for MR imaging. Hydrogen protons are charged particle and they have a spinning property and because of which they behave as a small magnet. Now when the human body containing hydrogen protons are placed inside a magnetic field or inside the MRI scanner, what happens? Most of the hydrogen protons will align parallel and few of them will align anti-parallel and we will get the net magnetization from the parallel component of the hydrogen proton and this is known as equilibrium condition. Now during this condition, we are not going to get any signals and because of that, we need to disturb the equilibrium condition and for this, for this, we will be applying RF pulses or radio frequency pulses with the help of RF coils. Now when we apply RF pulse, what happens? The magnetization along Z axis may shift to Y axis or XY plane and thereby we get the uh, signals uh, with the help of T1 relaxation and T2 relaxations. So that was the basic physics of MRI. We, we shall learn detail about MRI physics and the instruments uh, about MRI instrumentation. So thank you so much for watching. If you find this video useful, please like, share and subscribe.